Hi there. So now we've seen unit two, activity two, and the results of that feel like a pretty big deal to me. And if we think about what we saw, we saw that on both sides of the capacitor, we saw that each bulb did light up. So that gives us a first clue about that question of, is there anything happening on that bottom half of the circuit? Because we saw that uh, this second bulb, just like the first bulb, did briefly glow, but just like in activity one, just for a moment. Now, if we think about the results of what the compass showed us, this is pretty big news for us. Uh, we know that around this circuit, we know that we had for the charging circuit, we had the exact same direction around the loop at each of the four wires, wire A, wire B, wire C, wire D. Now, what a compass doesn't tell us is which way is stuff going. And if you think back to the reading at the end of unit one, uh, we know that the direction of what scientists decided would be their convention, their standard agreement, the conventional current direction, we talk about flowing from positive to negative. So if we're thinking about conventional current, then uh, we would think that here in wire A, that that current must be going away from the positive side of the battery towards this bulb. Now, we also saw that all the way around the loop, we had the exact same direction of flow all the way around the loop. So our results for wire B must be the same direction. And this part maybe matches up with what we were thinking beforehand, that maybe charges could flow from the positive side of the battery to the capacitor, but we also know that charges can't flow through the capacitor. So those charges must stop right here because there's no pathway to go through. But then we have the issue of what about wire C and what about wire D? Now, we should make a distinction here between what makes sense to us and what results we have seen. Because I'm gonna guess that these results don't yet make sense. We hope that they will make sense, but it might take us a little time to make some sense out of them. But what we did see is that here in wire C, we know that the charges moved in the same direction around the loop, whether we feel comfortable about that or not. And in wire D, same direction, all four wires, we had the exact same direction of flow. So we know uh, that charges moved uh, clockwise the way that I have this circuit drawn through wire A. And so if we think like, where did those charges come from? Well, okay, then we could say maybe they came from the positive side of the battery. And then where did they go? Well, they went into the light bulb. Great. If we think about wire B, where did those charges that go through wire B come from? Well, they must have come from the light bulb and those charges must have come from wire A and those charges must have come from the battery, the positive end of the battery. And if we think about wire D, where did these charges come from? that pass through wire D, well, they must have come from the light bulb. And we did see that the light bulb glowed. So the idea that charges passed through the light bulb seems like it fits our other thinking. So charges in wire D came through wire D from the light bulb. Okay, well, if they came through the light bulb, where did those come from? They must have come from wire C. So where did the charges that pass through wire C come from? Ooh, here's where we run into a little bit of difficulty because we know that inside of here, there is no passage through that capacitor. So if the charges traveled clockwise on the circuit that I drew 
through wire C, they must have come from this bottom plate, this bottom conductor of the capacitor, but they didn't pass through the capacitor. And this doesn't make any sense if we're thinking that the battery is the supplier of the charges because we know that they couldn't go through the capacitor. So we do know that charges came from this bottom plate of the capacitor, but we also know that they didn't flow through the capacitor. This is, this is strange. This is a little bit upsetting maybe. Um, if we think about the discharging circuit, we know that the directions in all of the wires were opposite what we had the first time. So we have a flow this way through the wire connected to the top plate of the capacitor. This way. This way. So we have here, we have charges flowing around that circuit counterclockwise. Uh, we have just the opposite direction that we had before. Now this matches up with maybe um, there were charges on the capacitor because we know that charges had to flow through these light bulbs. And so if charge flowed into light bulb number one in the discharging circuit, it must have come from the capacitor. Now we've seen that the capacitor sparks if I use a resetting wire on it after I've charged it. So this capacitor is maybe somehow holding onto a bunch of charges. And so when I set up this discharging circuit, then those charges leave the capacitor and come back around. Now, this doesn't make sense, again, if we think about the charging circuit where the battery is the supplier of charge because we know here in wire C that charges came from the capacitor but didn't go through the capacitor. Now, this doesn't make sense with the concept of battery as supplier of charge, but it could make sense if we think about the battery as a pusher of charges that were already there. This is consistent with the idea that if charges were already on the capacitor, then those charges just need a push. Now, does it make sense that those charges were already on the capacitor? Well, let's take a look here. Where are these charges coming from? Um, something that I think you already know on one level, but probably never made the connection between ideas. Um, this is a difficult concept for most of us to wrap our heads around, is that those charges were already there, like they were already there in the capacitor. The charges were there, they're still there. Um, I put those uh, circuit elements away, they're packed away in a box right now, but those charges are still there. Um, it's just that our charges need to be pushed. Now, humans didn't know. We've been studying electric circuits for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, but it wasn't until the last hundred-ish years that we knew what are those charged things that are in the metals that we use for building our circuits. But I think we know what those charge carriers are. And by charge carriers, we mean the movable things in a, in a substance that have charge. So charge carriers are the things that move that have charge. And I think that we know what those movable charged things are in a piece of metal. If we think back to what we studied uh, with electric charges, we know that 
in a piece of metal, we know that there are free electrons. There's this sea of electrons where the valence electrons of, say, a piece of copper are all just sort of shared with each other. And if there's a reason why they would move from one atom to another, then they can. So if those charges are getting pushed, then they move. Now, we learned about that a little bit when we were studying electric charges, like, you know, why does, uh, why does a piece of metal attract to a charged piece of tape, for example? Uh, we know that that polarizes, those electrons can move. And so the electrons, this is something that we definitely already knew, that all of the things that make up my circuit are made up of stuff that have electrons in them. And if those electrons are movable and they get pushed, then the electrons move. So were there charges already there in the capacitor? Yeah, both plates of the capacitor were loaded with electrons. Now they're also loaded with positively charged nuclei of atoms, uh, but we know that those positively charged nuclei don't travel anywhere. So we just need to be able to push the electrons that are already there in a piece of metal. Um, something that should, something that I should bring up now is that, uh, I'm still going to talk about conventional current charge flow. Um, I'm still going to talk about the motion of positive charges around a circuit, even though we know that in metals, it's the negative charges that actually do the moving. Um, there are some circumstances where positive charges move. Like if you have salt water, there are positive and negative ions in that solution and both of them move. So, um, the advantage to uh, thinking about only electrons doing the traveling, um, it's not that important. And also for hundreds and hundreds of years, physicists were studying the motion of charges without knowing is it positive stuff that moves this way or is it negative stuff that moves that way. And mathematically speaking, like a positive thing moving to the right and a negative thing moving to the left work out the same. So this is one of those situations where we, know when we're talking about positive charge movement, we know that we're wrong and we also know that it doesn't really matter and I don't really care. So there's that.